Greetings everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Tokyo Avengers, Season 2. Yep, Tokyo Avengers, Season 2, Episode 5. Welcome back to the Dojo, I'm Ryu. He's age, we're back for more Anime Night in the Dojo, and I'm kind of dead, but the show must go on. Uh, what did we get last week? Like, Kaka and Akai backstory, well, like when they were kids, the polar opposite family stuff. Uh, and Kisaki has a plan. And sharp objects were pointed at Kisaki and Takamichi respectively because Chifu, Chifu doesn't trust this man because, well, he kills him in an alternate timeline. <laughs> so can you blame him? Not really. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet and he's still pissed off. Anyway, um, that's where we're at, you know. Uh, not a huge amount to say going into it, honestly. Uh, just gotta kind of see where their plan goes from here. Uh, we saw that one dude from the Black Dragon sell out for like a thousand bucks. I mean, whatever. We know why, he just wants to follow the strong. Okay. They can take out Taiju, that's... That's great. And whatever. Um, I was also informed that apparently in the anime, uh, Taiju has hit, had his tattoos toned down a bunch, which... Lazy staff, I guess. I don't know what to call that. Why, why would you tone down something like that? I mean... <laughs> tattoos are cool when they're well done. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, we'll check it out. Uh, as I was recommended, um, once we're done with the season, because trying to avoid spoilers just in case but uh i could probably find a, a shot of him like full tattoo without any spoiler but either way that's weird but whatever um other than that yeah just gotta kind of see where kiski's plan goes and uh what they do and what his long game is really you know talked about that too you got anything age episode Alrighty then well let's just push some buttons and see what's up with the gang this week so there goes something hey you hungry <laughs> why are you gonna steal my ramen again <laughs> They were a piece of cake. Somehow I find that a little hard to believe. Yeah, he might have remembered some of the answers. About Maybe. Christmas. It's almost here. What about Christmas? Did I promise to do something special with Hina then? See you later. You guys are so gross flirting right in front of me. Jeez. He doesn't have time to waste? That's just what Kisaki said. I could ask you the same thing. How did you ever run into a guy like him? They, they really uh, drove home the point with the music right there. <laughs> if we then draw a square around the outside of the circle, it should look something like this. Flying dropkick. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? sense and christmas eve is only a week away what could possibly happen oh there's your time frame i was asking for last week nothing to worry about there. yeah excuse me mm -hmm. yeah forgive me you are takemichi right what do you even say to your girlfriend's father i should have had a speech or something ready for this moment i'm 26 and i feel like a nervous little kid <laughs> don't worry you don't need to be so nervous around me i'm not here to give you a hard time no <laughs> Well then? Oh no, you don't need to worry. It turns out now it's a great cop. And, uh -huh. huh? Oh, nothing. Never mind. I was just thinking out loud. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're just as nice as I've heard you were. Just one more thing, Takemichi. I wonder if I could ask you for one favor. Huh? I hope ten years from now, Takemichi and I can say the same. The Kanto region will remain mostly clear and sunny, but with the Uh, well... As it stands right now, not so much. <laughs> please, son. Please break up with my daughter. 
I only want Hinata to be happy. Let's go get some dinner and wait. Uh, I, I guess we're just skipping right to the main event over here, huh? Okay, why not? Who needs a planning phase? It's stupid. <laughs> Let's split up. Nina. Yeah, that's it. I like someone else. Yeah. That was his plan. Truth is, well, I just don't like you anymore. And so. Huh? <laughs> Damn, it wasn't even the autopilot this time. <sighs> so this is how it happened. Except for he's stupiding again because it's she gets targeted best. whether she's involved with the game not or not. Every little thing about you. I'll protect you, Hanagaki. You're safe with me around. <laughs> this is all for the best. Hey. So, the plot thickens. You know, I knew Kisaki back in elementary school, and he was a prodigy back then, too. Who would have guessed, right? I mean, that's that, that's something we did know about him. Uh, that That's just what he is. Um, so we got a little bit of backstory on him. Uh, the fact that him and Hina, like, were childhood friends, technically. Uh, definitely an interesting relationship there from just what we got in this episode. Um, but then, you know, this whole uh, backstory here with Takamichi <laughs> be being the hero. Well, guys, remember what Kisaki called Takamichi at last season's finale? <laughs> the hero. Hmm. So yeah. it, it's all coming full circle over here. Yeah, the main thing for this was just that it put some context on the fact that Kisaki has actually been involved from the beginning. Right. Now, what his motivation is still kind of up in the air, but the fact that he knows he's known Hina since they were kids and whatever, we still don't know the reason why. Well, no, we, we do know the reason why. He went to a private school and she didn't see him. But, you know, clearly, he still, for whatever reason, for lack of a better term, has feelings for her, or, like, remembers her, or whatever you want to call it, uh, that pulls her into this whole shenanigan, which <sighs> Takamichi has once again <laughs> screwed up. But, you know, I mean, let's face it. Kina's father literally asked him to break up with her. You know, e even as, you know, 25-year-old Takamichi, you know, at this point, still kind of a, a tough thing to say no to when a guy like that, you know, makes that kind of request of you. You know what I mean? A and not being, like, flippantly out of control or whatever. It's just like, you know... That was probably as real of a conversation as you could possibly get with someone's dad that knows you're a freaking gang member. You know what I mean? Plenty of parents would have probably like freaked out like, you need to stay, you know what I mean? The, the freak out, like you need to stay away from my daughter just being super mad about it, you know? Especially saying it's, he's a police officer. Right. So, I, I mean, you can't get much more real and just like, hey, listen, you, you seem like a, a decent guy. So since you're a decent guy, uh, you know, here, here's my request of you, you know, super respectful to a kid. You know, you're, you're not going to see that. So just a, a, as a thing from Takamichi's standpoint, it's like, damn, how do I say no to that? Because what he knows what happens in the future. Now, the only difference being, and Age pointed out during the outro there, was every time that this has happened so far, him and Hinata have been broken up. So to change something in the future, you kind of got to stay with her to see if that changes anything. You know, yeah, that's one of the major changes we're looking at still. Yeah, in every one of the timelines so far, they either never got together in the first place, which was the first few timelines, or they break up at Christmas Eve. Right. 
Which, uh, well, I guess there's no going back from that one at this point because it, it happened. Obviously, uh, he can still do something about it now. Um, which, uh... Yeah, they can still potentially get back together and stuff like that. It's just gonna be a lot of, uh, trying to pave over that whole drama. Right, which his, uh... Well, well, not the worst lie in the history of breaking up with somebody, uh... He could have at least been, like, half-truthful about, like, hey, the gang stuff's getting kind of weird and whatever, maybe we should just break up because it's it could get really bad and I don't want you to, you know, have to deal with this. You know, at least be somewhat reasonably truthful about it. Obviously, he's not going to say, well, your dad asked me to break up with you and that would cause all kinds of other problems. So, uh, obviously, that wasn't the way to go. But um, for, for Takamichi, not, not the worst lie, but she knows that he's full of crap still. <laughs> yeah. Um... But, that, but that's, you know, what what the whole episode revolved around for the most part, uh, other than, you know, them. Well, let's call them the Hanmas because it's funny. Uh, <laughs> Team Hanma over here uh, <laughs> coming up with their plan and uh, them immediately uh, agreeing to it. Um, which last week I did ask for like a time frame of where we're at. And I guess we're just jumping right to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day by mid season. I'm not against it. Whatever, you know, I mean, if there's not really anything else that they can really tell story-wise between them forming the Alliance and, you know, the, say, like, two weeks, I guess you could say, maybe between, like, when the beginning of the episode where they were talking, you know, like, oh, we're going to do this on Christmas Day. Okay, conservative estimate, two weeks, whatever. If there's not really anything else to tell, then it doesn't really matter, you know, so that's fine. Um, and the other major thing that came out of this too was Kisaki pointing out the fact that, you know, everything is wearing Mikey down, you know, mm -hmm. Baji's death really had a, had an effect on him. Uh, we kind of saw that last week with this shot over here, um, you know, with him asking, uh, Mitsuya to, you know, promise to, ne to never leave that kind of stuff. Um, and Kisaki's a smart guy, you know, obviously we've been over that plenty of times in the past. He, he knows what's up for multiple different reasons. So you got to yeah. believe him when he's he he knows you know trust me he knows. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still leaning more towards the Kisaki's not nearly as bad as everyone thinks he is at this point. Yeah, that that was the kind of thing that like we talked about in season one, where that's why I find him to be the most interesting character because of the potential that he's had since he was introduced, like, what he could possibly be doing, all that kind of stuff. Does he have a, uh, like, you know, like a counter power to Takamichi, just being, like, aware of, of the timeline changes, that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, he, he could be more complex than just... Uh, he's the bad guy. You know, he's the yeah. antagonist. Yeah, no, the way I see it, he's, an, he's the antagonist to Takamichi, but he's not the villain. Right. We either A, still don't know who the actual villain is, or B, the villain is Mikey, and we're just fighting future Mikey, basically. Right. Because, you know, from every timeline that we've gotten so far, Mikey has been just completely everything that we've gotten about him in the future. He is not the Mikey that we've gotten, you know, in the past, just at all. Yeah, like just every... events have ground him into a very jaded and cold individual from everything that we've been shown at least in the anime yeah like every timeline so far it's always been a case of mikey's completely cut himself off from like all social aspects of the gang and it's just running everything from the background right so as it stands uh you know, it'll be interesting to see how they develop Kisaki, especially if I, I don't think as it stands um, that this is going to go over exactly as planned. You know, no. they're they're probably going to stop Hakai from killing Kaiju at the very least. They're not going to kill Kaiju. No way. Ka yeah, Kaiju, no. sorry. Yeah, no, I, I see this as being basically that, yeah, they 
they stop Hakai's attempt at, at killing him, but fail to kill Taiju, and it escalates into full-on war between the two gangs. Right. As, uh, at the end of the day, just typical knowledge. You, there's nothing we can do about it. Ne next week, we'll be halfway... After next week's episode is over, we'll be halfway through the arc. So we still got six episodes to go. We got half the season still. So uh, <laughs> clearly, ba based on the title, you know, something's going to happen. You know, uh, it's... Well, it may not be the Christmas showdown on Christmas Day. Uh, just like it's, it's the Christmas season arc. You know, the, the, the rest of the year is probably not going to be uh, great. And, you know, war were declared it, uh, again. Because they, they, they tried, you know, and, and what are the ramifications when Tomon finds out what the hell Team Hanma did over here? You know? Uh, so, th there is a bunch of different stuff on the table to how this could be handled, and it'll be interesting to see how they do it. Um, how Tomon reacts, it, Mikey and Draken at this point, and the other captains, because they were on board with the... Uh, uh, Mitsu's plan. Uh, sorry. Um, how they feel about, you know, these two captains going rogue, you know, is going to be important. You know, C could this be where Kisaki gets kicked out of the gang? You know, but that would also mean that Takamichi also gets kicked out of the gang because he was part of it. That kind of thing. Um, it could possibly just be only Kisuki who gets kicked out, because Kisuki is the inciter here. Right. Like, yeah, uh... Yeah, Takamichi is the one who wants there to not be a truce, and, like, has openly said it, but he didn't... He wasn't going behind people's backs like Kisuki and trying to recruit against the truce. Right. Kisuki is the one actively organizing treason, quite literally, here. Right. Which, again, you know, we already know from previous episodes that, you know, Taiju's word is as good as a, you know, wet paper bag. <laughs> we could wake up in one morning and just be like, eh, you know what, screw that. Yuzaha is going back to, you know, doing what she was doing. They're stupid. You know, those guys are idiots. I don't care. <laughs> so it's, it's a fairly complex situation. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how, how it plays out. I am a little surprised that we're we're doing this at mid season, but I mean, if it's handled well, who cares? You know, um, and so far this season has been better, so I, I don't really have any complaints about this other than the random like animation oofs, which again, like we talked about before, that doesn't really matter, and not that I've been really looking out for them, but uh, the last couple episodes there really hasn't been anything. Uh, animation wise that you know would be supremely noticeable or like oh look there's just people in the background you know that are disappearing and reappearing take this episode for example when chifuyu and takamichi are like walking through the crowd the crowd's the same from every shot mm -hmm. so you know there are could there be some minor things here and there yeah whatever but again it's for a show like this it's not super important unless it's like a major action sequence so uh you know if there's a fight coming up then you know, might have to pay attention a little bit more to see how the chore the choreograph and stuff goes off, but you know. Yeah. Uh major things, you know, Kisaki and Hina's past relationship, that kind of thing. And then Takamichi pulling a little oof there and uh, you know, while he is making some reasonable changes here on the gang side, there's still the Hina to side to consider in the grand scheme of things and well, he might have not been in autopilot mode this episode. He still did what his autopilot did. Uh, yeah. And didn't make the change, which he can still fix it, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's that's something... Well, he's coming around to be smarter on the gang side of things, like, you know, with his thoughts on, like, getting, you know, information on Kisaki by working with him, stuff like that. He's coming around the gang side and, and being smarter about it, but on the on the Hina side, he is he's not... Um, which, you know, is unfortunate, but he'll probably get there. He'll be all right. <laughs> it's going to be the, uh, the crybaby, crybaby hero route of, well, he'll get there eventually, you know? Though, uh, he, he kind of already came to that realization a little bit after 
Hina literally beat the crap out of him and realized kind of like, well, I still love her. Shit. <laughs> yeah, which you brought up the whole like Kisaki might have feelings for Hina, which I don't I don't actually really he might, but I don't think that's really the thing playing any major part here. I think it's still more of just a case of he targets Hinata in the future specifically as a motivating factor to uh, Takamichi. Right. Takamichi's still not fixing what he's supposed to be fixing, so he keeps killing Hina just purely to get Takamichi to go back and try to fix that. Right. Because he knows she's the primary motivating factor for him. Yeah. So, um... That's all I really got this week. Um, you know, just a solid setup episode, you know. Um, I will say that uh, that was one of the spoilers that I did get, which if it's not really a spoiler because you kind of knew it was coming in a way, but I did see, I don't remember wh where and when I saw it, but I saw like the the Christmas Eve thing with Takamichi breaking up with Hina and I kind of like face palmed, like, you know, really we're doing this again, but you know, I, I thought to myself, there's got to be some reasonable reason behind this. He's not, you know, he had to have made some character progression, right? There's there, there's some outlying reason why he did that. And we got all of it this episode. The whole Kisaki thing and, you know, he and his father, the thing we already went over. So it wasn't just him, knee-jerk reaction like, well, we should break up. <laughs> so uh, that, that's why context is important. You, you can't just see one scene and in something and go well that was stupid it's like well no you kind of got to watch the whole damn thing <laughs> so yeah um but while i was kind of sitting on that information so far i was just like okay how are we gonna get there and well pretty important how we got there so uh well it makes sense in a reasonable standpoint from what he and his dad asked for uh at the end of the day uh he really does need to stay with her because staying with her would change a reasonable amount one would assume you know based on all the information we have at the moment so anyway that's it for me got anything else age um <laughs> we still haven't gotten to my spoiler yet but i've had that spoiler since like midway through season one fair enough and it's probably not something that's going to come up for quite a while unless something radical changes about how the pacing is going for this season yep yeah we'll talk about that when that happens uh other than that you know uh definitely should be a hell of a mid-season next week uh well it might not turn out or probably definitely not going to turn out exactly how they want it to uh it'll probably be a reasonable half measure at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube beyond how you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was Tokyo Revengers Season 2, Episode 5. Yeah. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey, everyone. Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing that subscribe and like button. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and see you next time.